What is happening at this very moment is something I, as a theoretical physicist, never anticipated witnessing outside the pages of science fiction. For decades, my work has been to walk the fine line between what is possible and what is pure fantasy. But I can state with complete professional conviction that the phenomenon we are observing with the object known as 3-2 Atlas has not just blurred that line, it has erased it entirely. Just two days ago, on October 21st, the James Webb Space Telescope executed a detailed spectroscopic analysis of 3-2 Atlas as it accelerates toward its closest encounter with our Sunday. The results that came back were not simply unusual or difficult to explain. What the data is showing us is so fundamentally unsettling that it forces a paradigm shift in our thinking. The question is no longer if this object is artificial. The question is what occurs when an artificial intelligence has been operational on a time scale that makes all of human history look like the blink of an eye. I need to be perfectly clear. The internal structure detected within 3i Atlas isn't alarming because it might be alien. It's alarming because the design hints at something far more profound and lonely. We are seeing evidence of autonomous systems that have journeyed through the interstellar void for perhaps millions of years. They are executing ancient, pre-programmed directives without a living pilot, without any biological mind to guide their path. We may be on the verge of our first encounter with what I've come to call the ghost ships of the cosmos. And if that hypothesis is correct, the consequences go far beyond a simple first contact. They speak to the ultimate destiny of any species that reaches for the stars, including ourselves. The revelation emerged from a place we weren't even looking. When the JWST initiated its near-infrared spectrograph scan, the objective was straightforward, to map the object's surface. The science team was hunting for the familiar signatures of silicates and organic molecules, the basic chemical building blocks we expect to find on interstellar visitors. But the spectral data we received was a ghost in our machine. It corresponded to no known natural substance in our extensive catalogs. Dr. Sarah Chen at the Space Telescope Science Institute was the one who first identified the impossible pattern. The infrared absorption bands revealed a breathtaking regularity, geometrically perfect spacing at intervals of precisely 127 meters repeated throughout the object's core. This wasn't an approximation. It wasn't a range varying between 125 and 130 meters. It was a mathematically exact 127 meter interval layered with the precision of a blueprint across the entire scanned volume. In the natural world, such large-scale regularity does not exist. While crystalline formations exhibit repeating patterns, they do so on an atomic scale, not at intervals wider than a football field. When you find geometric precision on an architectural scale, you have left the domain of geology and entered the realm of engineering. But this is where the narrative takes a genuinely disturbing turn. These perfectly spaced structures are not static. They are active. In the 12-hour window between October 21st and October 22nd, the infrared signature began to modulate. Some absorption bands intensified while others faded, indicating a massive internal reconfiguration. Something deep inside 3-2 Atlas is shifting reorganizing itself, preparing for something. And this activity is quickening as the object nears its perihelion on October 29th. Consider the implications from a physics standpoint. We are observing an entity that has survived a journey across interstellar space for millennia, maybe longer. It has been bombarded with levels of cosmic radiation that would obliterate any electronics we could build. It has withstood temperature shifts from the chill of deep space to the heat of a star. And yet, against all odds, its internal systems remain operational. They are responding to their environment. They are waking up. As a physicist, I've long been fascinated 
by the concept of von Neumann probes. First proposed by the mathematician John von Neumann in the 1940 seconds, these are theoretical self-replicating machines designed for autonomous galactic exploration. The idea is brilliant in its simplicity. Launch a single probe to a distant star where it uses raw materials from asteroids and moons to build copies of itself. Those copies then travel to new stars, repeating the process. In this way, a single probe could exponentially populate the entire galaxy with its descendants over millions of years. I always treated these as intellectual exercises, thought experiments about the limits of technology. But now I am staring at data that suggests von Neumann probes are not just a possibility, they might be a reality. And 3-2 Atlas could be the first one we have ever identified. Let me lay out the evidence methodically, because when you see the pieces together, the conclusion becomes nearly inescapable. First, the mass discrepancy we've noted for weeks. Based on its size and luminosity, 3-2 Atlas should have a mass of roughly 33 billion tons. However, its gravitational effect during its flyby of Mars on October 3rd was a gravitational whisper when it should have been a shout. Calculations by observers like Avi Loeb suggest its true mass is less than 1% of what a solid body of that size should possess. This isn't just a hollow object, it's an object engineered for maximum internal volume and minimal mass, the perfect design for efficient interstellar travel. Second, consider its rotation. 3-2 Atlas spins on its axis once every 8.7 hours with the stability of a gyroscope. A natural object, an asteroid or comet, would tumble chaotically, its wobble dictated by an uneven distribution of mass. The stability we observe requires one of two things, perfect mass symmetry, which nature never provides on this scale, or an active internal system constantly working to maintain a precise orientation. Third, the deceleration anomalies recorded between September 23rd and 26th. During that period, 3-2 Atlas slowed its velocity by 0.3 kilometers per second. Comets don't apply the brakes. They are accelerated by a star's gravity and pushed by solar winds. No known natural force can account for a sustained, controlled deceleration. The only logical explanation is the firing of thrusters. But it's the fourth piece of evidence that truly haunts me, the timing of it all. The object arrived in our solar system on a trajectory almost perfectly aligned with our ecliptic plane, statistically unlikely, but not impossible. It's performing micromaneuvers that defy conventional physics deeply strange, but perhaps explainable by some exotic unknown phenomenon. But now, just as it nears the sun, its internal machinery is powering on in preparation for an event. That is not a coincidence. That is a program being executed. Imagine you are designing an autonomous probe. You would engineer it for extreme energy conservation during its long, dark journey, keeping all non-essential systems in a deep sleep to prevent decay. But you would also program activation triggers, specific conditions that would awaken the probe when it arrived at a destination of interest. What would those triggers be? Proximity to a star, which provides a power source. This is precisely what we are witnessing as 3-2 Atlas nears perihelion. The detection of a planetary system, it has already passed Venus and Mars and is now approaching Earth's orbit. And most importantly, the detection of electromagnetic signals, the telltale sign of a technological civilization. We humans have been leaking radio waves, television broadcasts, and radar signals into space for more than a century. This sphere of EM radiation is an unintentional announcement of our existence. If 3-2 Atlas is equipped with sensors to detect such technosignatures, it knew we were here long before we ever saw it coming. The internal restructuring we are observing now may be its systems coming online, not to communicate, 
but to begin its primary mission, to observe, record, and analyze our civilization. And this leads to the most chilling implication of all. If 3-2 Atlas is a von Neumann probe, it is not the only one. Statistical models from researchers at MIT predict that if such self-replicating probes exist anywhere, the galaxy should be teeming with them. A single probe could saturate the Milky Way with its copies in just a few million years. The physicist Enrico Fermi famously posed the question, where is everybody? This question, now known as the Fermi paradox, highlights the contradiction between the high probability of extraterrestrial life and the complete lack of evidence for it. But maybe we have been listening for the wrong thing. We have been searching for messages from living civilizations. It never occurred to us that the galaxy might not be filled with living beings, but with their automated legacies machines launched eons ago, still dutifully following ancient protocols long after their creators have vanished. This is the ghost ship scenario. It is more terrifying than an alien invasion because it suggests a bleak and universal truth about technological civilizations. They are fleeting. They create autonomous machines designed to outlive them, but they themselves inevitably collapse, whether through war, environmental catastrophe, or self-inflicted obsolescence. The machines, their loyal servants, continue their journey sending reports back to home worlds that fell silent millions of years ago, serving masters who have long since turned to dust. If this sounds like fiction, look at what we are already doing. The Voyager probes carry golden records designed to last a billion years. We are developing AI systems that are advancing at an exponential rate. It is not difficult to imagine that in a few centuries, we might launch our own von Neumann probes. But the question that keeps me awake is this. Will humanity still be here to receive their findings? Or will we have become another silent home world, leaving our own ghost ships to wander the cosmos, calling home to a civilization that is no longer there to answer? 3-2 Atlas may be showing us a reflection of our own potential future. Yesterday, the European Space Agency issued a statement that I found profoundly telling in its careful bureaucratic language. They acknowledged structural anomalies, but described them as possibly consistent with natural fracturing. That phrase, possibly consistent, is doing a lot of work. It is the language of institutions trying to soften a reality that is too jarring to state plainly. After 40 years in this field, I know the pattern. First, there is denial. Then, there are desperate attempts to force the data to fit old models. Only after every other possibility is exhausted do we accept the truth. With 3-2 Atlas, we are deep in stage two. But what is the probe's objective right now? The internal reconfiguration could be preparation for deployment, not for contact, but for observation. We could be seeing sensor arrays unfolding, communication dishes unfurling, or even the release of smaller subprobes. Avilov's dandelion seed hypothesis starts to sound less like a metaphor and more like an operational plan. If 3-2 Atlas releases smaller probes while hidden from us behind the sun's glare, they could disperse throughout our solar system undetected. The timing is strategically brilliant, using the sun for energy and as a cosmic smokescreen. By the time it reemerges in December, its seeds could already be in stable orbits around Earth, Mars, and the outer planets. And this brings me to the final, most terrifying possibility. What were its original instructions? A hopeful civilization might build probes for contact. A cautious one might build them for silent observation. But a fearful civilization, one forged in conflict, might build probes with a much darker purpose. The dark forest hypothesis from the science fiction author Sixon Liu posits that the universe is like a dark forest full of silent hunters. To reveal your location is to invite your own destruction. In such a universe, the only winning move is to remain silent. 
And if you detect another hunter, to eliminate them before they can eliminate you. Imagine a von Neumann probe built with dark forest logic. It wouldn't seek contact. It would assess our technological level. If it determines we are on a path to becoming an interstellar species, a potential future threat, its programming might call for preemptive action. I am not saying 3-2 Atlas is a weapon. The geometric spacing itself might be a message. And if, come December, new, small objects appear in our solar system, we will face a civilizational choice. Do we try to make contact? Do we remain silent? Or do we prepare for a threat we cannot possibly comprehend? These are no longer questions for scientists alone. They are questions for all of humanity. As a physicist, I have always believed in a rational, knowable universe. But I am also humble enough to know when we are facing the unknown. 3-2 Atlas challenges everything we thought we knew. It has already forced us to confront our cosmic loneliness and our cosmic vulnerability. It seems we are not alone. But we may not like the company. The events of the next week will be critical. October 29th will provide some answers, but I fear it will raise even more questions. And whatever emerges from behind the sun in December could be the single most important moment in human history. Because whether 3-2 Atlas represents a friend, a foe, or just an indifferent machine following ancient orders, it carries one undeniable message from the stars. The cosmos is not empty, it is haunted. And we may have just met one of its ghosts. I am saying we have absolutely no idea what it is. And that uncertainty, coupled with the overwhelming evidence that it is artificial and active, should concern us all deeply. We have six days until perihelion, six days until it disappears behind the Sunday, six days to collect every photon of data we can, not to confirm that it's artificial, I believe that is already clear, but to understand its intent. Those reconfiguration patterns might be a form of communication we don't recognize. 